find the ratio in which the line segment joining 1 comma minus 5 and minus 4 comma 5 is divided by the x axis. Now we're not being given a point here. Can you see we've been given a line? The x axis is a line. So you have to find how this x axis divides this line segment. But what does that really mean? That means that you find where this x axis cuts this line segment. That's a point. And then see how that point divides, in what ratio that point divides this line segment. That's what the question is asking us. In fact, uh, if we read further, find the coordinates of that point of intersection where the x-axis meets this line segment. How do you want to do this? Let's first draw a diagram. Then let's look at the diagram to see what ideas we get. And then let's go ahead and find the ratio and the coordinates. Let's start by um, creating the coordinate axis. I would like you to see what happens when you draw this Look at the diagram and see what you need to do without going into your mind. Like one of the ways to think about it is draw the diagram and then go, okay, how can I use section formula now? What is M here? What is N here? And so on. Uh, that is usually not the best way to think about it. There are more intuitive ways to solve this. So let's begin right now and uh, do solve, put the first point one comma minus five. That's one to the right. And then minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So I have one comma minus five over here. 1 comma minus 5 and I need minus 4 comma 5 that's 1 2 3 4 4 steps to the left and then 5 to the 5 above because it's plus 5 1 2 3 4 5 somewhere over here minus 4 comma 5 and now I want the line segment that's connecting the two so that's this is the line segment that's going to connect the two so that's the line segment how is it divided by the x-axis and now we can see that the x-axis does divide this line segment. Now it's totally possible that the x-axis did not. But can you see that you could have seen the question and been sure that the x-axis divides it? Because one point has a negative y-axis, y-coordinate value, and the other one has a positive. So if this line segment has to go somewhere below the x-axis to somewhere above, it has to cut the x-axis, right? And I can, oh, I just noticed one more thing, and you can notice it as well. What is that? This minus 5 is five steps below the x-axis and plus five is five steps above the x-axis. So keep that in mind because I think that's going to play a part in our answer over here. Because what is the question right now? Find the ratio in which the line segment joining these two points is divided by the x-axis. So where is the point at which the intersection is happening? That's over here. That looks like some minus uh, 1.5 I think somewhere, I don't know, somewhere there. A good diagram my teacher used to always say can actually help you guess the answer much before you actually have it. So now you have this point and uh, we don't know the coordinates of this point or do we? We do know the y coordinate, right? It's the x axis. So it's something comma zero. So I'm going to call it x comma zero. It's something comma zero. We don't know it. So now what we can do is see if we can find this x and then um, find the ratio or something. But then I know something. I know that finding the ratio is usually easier. And why? Because to find the ratio, I don't need all the coordinate values. I don't need both x and y. I only need x fully, the x coordinate of all the three points, or the y coordinate of all the three points. If I have that, I'm done. And why is that? We saw that a little bit in the previous video. So if you want to take a deeper look at why that is, you can go into the previous video. It just involves having two similar triangles and noticing that to find the ratio of two sides, you either need the heights or the lens, one of them will do. So in this case, we don't have both. We have only one. We have the y coordinates of all the points, but that's enough. So what do we do now? We have to find this length by this length. Actually, no, we need to find this length by this length because the ratio of the point starts, the yellow points given first. So this one by this one. And what is that going to be equal to? That's going to be equal to um, this height by this height. Now why is this? A quick refresher of why this is the case. This is because this angle, this triangle that we see over here has a 90 degrees over here and this triangle has a 90 degrees over here. This angle is equal to is equal to this angle. So let me draw that. This angle and this angle are equal. Let's make this yellow. Yeah. Why are they equal? It's because they're alternate angles and because these two these two lines are parallel. 
and this is a transversal, they're alternate angles. And now you've shown they're similar triangles. You've not used any formula, you're just noticing the geometry of this. And uh, because they're similar triangles, you know that this side by this side will be the same as this side by this side, which is what you want. You want this side by this side. Now, what is the length of this side? The coordinate, the y coordinate is minus 5. So the length is 5. And what about this side? The y coordinate is 5, which means the length is 5 again. And that's interesting because not only are these two triangles similar, now you know they are congruent because uh, they have the same lengths. Now, what does that mean? That means that this side and this side are in the ratio 1 is to 1. Or in other words, this side and this side are also in the ratio 1 is to 1, which means the answer we want, find the ratio. The ratio is, ratio is 1 is to 1. They are equal. Now, notice that we actually found the ratio even without having to find the coordinates of the point of intersection. Yeah, I mean, one of the ways, at least when I think about it, was like, okay, maybe you have to find this point first and only then I can find the ratio. And that's not true. You can find the ratio before you find the point because the ratio is easier. But of course, you can also find the point because once you had these two sides to be equal, you know that these two sides are also equal and you can use that to find you know, these two sides. This one and this one are also equal. And that's enough to find the coordinates of this point. Watch what happens when you pause the video and uh, look at look at nothing else is needed. You just know the coordinates of these and uh, you know that these two lines are line segments are equal. That's all you need to find this x value. Do it. I'm going to do it right now. So I know that all the way from here to this end, the length is going to be minus 4, 2 plus 1. That's a length of 5. So that entire length is 5. But then I want only half of that because that's where this point is. This point is right in between those two, right? That's why we call them congruent. So this length is 2.5. So then all I need to find my x is at 2.5 to minus 4 and there I'll have it. So 2.5 to minus 4 is minus 3, minus 2 and then minus 1.5. So minus 1.5 comma 0. I can just verify this by walking leftwards from plus 1. So 1 minus 2.5 should also give me the answer because this length is also 2.5. So uh, 1 minus 2.5 is 0, minus 1, minus 1.5. And our diagram already suggested that because we drew it not, not too badly, I think. So there you have it. 